أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وعلى أصحابه وعلى من يتبعهم إحسانا إلى يوم الدين وبعد uh, Let's start with the recitation uh, sorry with the readings uh, Ayla is not here afterwards it's uh, uh, Hafsa Nadeem's turn Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Part 2 Abu Talib's Support and Concern A few days later, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Ali ibn Abi Talib to arrange a feast and invite his relatives. About 40 people attended it. At the end of the feast, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rose to say something but the mischievous utterances of Abu Lahab took away from the Prophet ﷺ a chance to warn them and call them to Islam. After a gap of a few days, Allah's Messenger ﷺ arranged another feast and as his relatives finished their meal, the Prophet ﷺ stood up and said, Look, I have come to you with something that no one else has ever brought for this tribe. I bring you the best of this world and the next. Allah, Allah has commanded me to call you to him. Tell me who will lend his support to me in this work. They sat in silence. No one made any response. But when the silence remained unbroken, the 13-year-old Ali spoke out and said, O Prophet of Allah, I will be your helper in this. Abu Talib too assured the Prophet of his support. An enmity of Quraysh when Allah's Messenger وسلم, openly proclaimed the call to Islam and called the people to Tawheed, oneness of Allah, his people did not distance themselves, did not distance themselves from him, nor did they reject him. But when he said criticize their false gods and idols they regarded him as a traitor and united in opposition against him in assemblies and gatherings in fear and teacher, just right now, can you know where you're doing um, we are reading the lesson what teacher we are reading the lesson open page number 158 uh, please hafsa continue Marketplaces and by reaching out people in their homes, the Prophet ﷺ would teach people the, the virtues of Tawheed and warn them against worshipping idols, gambling, lying, fraud, theft, and all kinds of vices. The Quraysh were so proud, it was not easy for them to tolerate insulting remarks against their ancestors' faith and practices. They were also they were also very particular about this about the difference between slaves and their masters. But Islam taught them the equality of both of them. Allah all the tribes in Arabia re respected the Quraysh and the Meccans. This was due to the idols they used to come to Mecca to worship. Islam, on the other hand, was the enemy of idolatry. The heads and noblemen of Mecca could not step down from their arrogant positions and follow the Prophet most of most of the tribes had a feeling of hatred towards Banu Hashim, so they did not accept a man from a rival to, rival to guide them. Thus, open preaching in 
ignited the fire of hostility all over Arabia. It turned into a blaze during the fourth year of prophethood. Um, Maham Rehan. Prophet Muhammad Part 4, Abu Talib's support and concern. A few days later, Allah's messenger asked Ali ibn Abi Talib to arrange a feast and invite his relatives. About 40 people attended it. At the end of the feast, Allah's messenger rose to say something, but the mischievous utterances of Abu Lahab took away from the Prophet a chance to warn them and call them to Islam. After a gap of a few days, Allah's Messenger arranged another feast and as his relatives finished their meal, the Prophet وسلم, stood up and said, Look, I have come to you with something no one else has brought, ever brought to this tribe for his tribe. I bring you the best of this world and the next. Allah has commanded me to call you to him. Tell me he will lend his support to me in this world. They sat in silence. No one made any response. But when the silence remained unbroken, the 13th year old Ali spoke out and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I will be your helper in this. A put Allah to assure the of his support. Enmity of the Quraysh. When Allah's Messenger openly proclaimed the call to Islam and called people, the people to Tawheed, oneness of Allah, his people did not distance themselves from him, nor did they reject him. But when he criticized their false calls and idols, they regarded him as a threat and they united in opposition against him. In assemblies and gatherings, in prayers and marketplaces, and by reaching out people in their homes, the Prophet would teach people the virtues of Tawheed and warn them against worshipping idols, gambling, lying, fraud, theft, and all kinds of virtues. The Quraysh was so proud, it was not easy for them to tolerate insulting remarks against their ancestors' state and practices. They were also very particular about the difference between slaves and their masters. But Islam thought, thought the equality of both of them. All the tribes in, in Arabia respected the Quraysh and the Makkans. This was due to the idols they used to come to Makkans. But that wish. Islam, on the other hand, was the enemy of the of idolatry. The heads and noblemen of Makkah could not step down from their arrogant position and follow the Prophet. Most of the tribes had a feeling of hatred to, towards Banu Hashim, so they could not accept a man from a rival to guide them. Thus, open thinking ignited the fire of hostility all over Arabia. It turned into a blaze during the fourth year of prophethood. Okay, uh, next is uh, Mahira Umar. <clears throat> Prophet Umar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Part 4 Abu Talib Support and Concern A few days later, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Ali ibn Ali Abi Talib to arrange a feast and invite his relatives. About 40 people attended it. At the end of the feast, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rose to say something, but the mischievous attorney utterances of Abu Lahab took away from the Prophet Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a chance to warn them and call them to Islam. After a gap of a few days, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arranged another feast. And as his relatives finished their meal, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up and said, Look, I have come to you with something that you know one else has ever brought for his tribe. I bring you the best of this world and, and the next. Allah, 
has commanded me to call you to him. Tell me who will lend his support to me in this work. They sat in silence. No one made any response, but when the silence remained unbroken, the 13-year-old Ali spoke out and said, O Prophet of Allah, I will be your helper in this. Abu Ali too assured the Prophet of his support. Enmity of the Quraysh. When Allah's Messenger openly proclaimed the call to Islam and called the people to Tawheed, oneness of Allah, his people did not distance themselves from him, nor did they reject him. But when he criticized their false gods and idols, they regarded him as a threat and they united in opposition against him. In assemblies and gatherings, fairs and marketplaces, and by reaching out people in their homes, the Prophet ﷺ would teach people the virtue virtues of Tawheed and warn them against worshipping idols. Gambling, lying, fraud, theft, and all kinds of vices. The Quraysh were so proud, it was not easy for them to tolerate insulting remarks against their ancestors' faith and practices. They were also very particular about their the difference between slaves and their masters. But Islam taught the equal equality of both of them. All the tribes in Arabia respected the Quraysh and this was due to the idols they used to come to Mecca to worship. Islam, on the other hand, was the enemy of idolatry. The heads and noblemen of Mecca could not step down from their arrogant positions and follow the Prophet Most of the tribes had a feeling of hatred towards Van Hashem, so they could not accept a man from a rival to guide them. Thus, opening preaching ignited the fire of hostility all over Arabia. It turned into a blaze during the fourth year of prophethood. Okay, next one is the Minahil Farhan. Abu Tari support and concern. A few days later, Allah's Messenger وسلم, asked Ali ibn Abi Talib to arrange a feast and invite his relatives. About 40 people attended it. At the end of the feast, Allah's Messenger وسلم, rose to say something about the mischievous utterances of Abu Lahab took away from the Prophet a chance to warn them and to call them to Islam. After a gap of a few days, Allah's Messenger arranged another feast and as his relatives finished their meal, the Prophet stood up and said, look, I have come to you with something that no one else has ever bought for his tribe. I bring you the best of the world. And the next, Allah has commanded me to call you to him. Tell me who will lend his support to me in this work. They sat in silence. No one made my response, any response. But when the silence remained unbroken, the 13-year-old Ali spoke out and said, O Prophet of Allah, I will be your helper in this Abu Talib to assure Prophet of his support, enmity of the Quraysh. When Allah's Messenger وسلم, open, openly proclaimed the call to Islam and called the people to Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, his people did not distance themselves from him nor did they reject him, but then he criticized their false gods and idols. They regarded him as a threat and they united the opposition against him in assemblies and gatherings in fairs and marketplaces. And by reaching out people in their homes, the Prophet would teach people the virtues of Tawheed and warned them against worshipping idols. 
gambling, lying, fraud, theft, and all kinds of vices. The Quraysh were so proud it was not easy for them to tolerate insulting remarks against their ancestors' faith and practices. They were also very particular about the difference between slaves and their masters, but Islam taught the equality of both of them. All the tribes in Arabia respected the Quraysh and the Makkans. This was due to the idols they used to come to Mecca to worship Islam. On the other hand, was the enemy of idolatry, the heads and noblemen of Mecca could not step down from their arrogant positions and follow the Prophet ﷺ. Most of the tribes had a feeling of hatred towards Banu Hashim, so they could not accept a man from a revile to guide them. The open preaching ignited the fire of hostility all over Arabia. It turned, uh, it turned into a blaze during the fourth year of prophethood. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away. A few days later, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked Ali ibn Abi Talib to arrange a feast and invite his relatives. About forty people attended it, as did relatives about. About 40 people attended it. At the end of the feast, Allah Prophet rose to say something, but the mischievous patroness of Abu Lahab took away from the Prophet a chance to warn them and to call them to Islam. After a gap of a few days, Allah arranged a and as his relatives finished their meal, the Prophet stood up and said, Look, I have some, I have come to you with something that no one else has ever brought for his tribe. I bring you the best of this world and the next. Allah has commanded me to call you to him. Tell the land is supposed to me in this world. They sat in silence. No one made any response. But when the silence Sir, X is equal to minus three. unbroken, the 13-year-old oh, Ali yes. spoke out and yes. said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I will be your helper in this. Abu Talib to so assume we'll move the left. Prophet of the support. In, in mighty of the Quraysh. When Allah's Messenger وسلم, openly proclaimed the call to Islam and called the people to the heed oneness of Allah, this be, his people did not distance themselves for, from him, nor did they reject him. But when he criticized their false gods and idols, they regarded him as a threat and they so united so the name of the red line is minus X plus against y him in assemblies and gatherings in fairs and marketplaces and by reaching out to people in their homes the prophet would teach people to wait varieties of the heat and warn them against worshipping idols, gambling, lying, fraud, theft, and all kinds of vices. The Quraysh were so proud, um, proud, it was not easy for them to tolerate insulting remarks against their ancestors' faith and practices. They were also very particular about the difference between 
slaves and their masters, but Islam taught the equality of both of them. All the tribes in Arabia respected the Quraysh and the Makkans. This was due to I yes. the idols. They used to come yes. to yes. Makkah uh, to worship Islam and to worship Islam on the other hand yes. was yes. the enemy of idolatry. And the heads and noblemen of Makkah could not step down from their argument, argument um, positions and follow the Prophet. Most of the tribes had a feeling of hatred towards Banu Hashim, so they could not accept a man from a Arrival from a arrival yes, sir, I'm ready to guide them. Thus, when preaching in ignited the fire of hostility, hostility mm. all over Arabia. It turned into a blaze during the fourth year of prophethood.